Now, lots of people wonder whether it's right or not to feed birds during the summertime. It's pretty obvious that you want to feed them during the winter, especially when it's very, very cold. They really need that food. During the summer, it's not really quite so clear. Birds can benefit because even though they may be feeding young, they can easily find food for themselves, which means that frees up more time for them to look for food to feed their young, and that will mostly be insect food. To a certain extent, sometimes they may feed their chicks with seed and the sort of stuff that you might put out for them, um, and, and that may help if food is very, very scarce. Otherwise, birds are most inclined just to find insects anyway for their young. But the best thing of all is just to make sure that your garden is well stocked with lots of flowers and lots of bushes and shrubs so that they can easily find insect food, natural insect food to feed their chicks with. So where should you put your feeders? Well, if you've got a tree like this, then that's obviously the perfect site. It's easy to hang things up in the tree. And the tree's important because it means that the birds have got somewhere that they can easily perch before sort of going down to the feeder. And it gives them some cover. Birds are always on the lookout for sparrow hawks in particular. And that means that provided they can get into a tree, they can, they've got a good chance of escaping a sparrow hawk or if they can get to a nearby hedge or bush. That's very important for them. But there is a problem with hanging things up in trees and that's because you get a huge amount of old seed and bits and pieces and bird droppings all falling down in the same place on the ground and that can promote disease and that's a real problem. So it's very important to actually move your feeders probably every sort of four or five weeks at least to a different site so that that ground can recover. But what if you haven't got anywhere else handy to put the feeders? Maybe you've only got the one tree in the garden. Where else can you hang them? Well, I've got the answer to that back over here. One of these portable kind of bird food holders, these sort of stands, easily poke into any sort of soft ground anywhere. And they're a brilliant idea. You can move them around terribly easily from site to site anytime you want. And that means that the ground can always stay fresh and dry and clear of any droppings or anything like that. So they're really worth investing in. All right, now to the most important part of all. It's all about cleaning. Now this is really, really important. There's a number of diseases that birds can get which they pick up from the bird feeders and from being in close proximity with each other. Green finches get trichomonosis, uh, which uh, affects their, um, their sort of gut, their upper sort of oesophagus. They can't eat properly. You sometimes see them, they look sort of extra fat and they appear to be incredibly tame and they're rather listless. Um, that's a real killer. Chaffinches get papilloma virus on their legs. Often you see these kind of warty, fungusy looking growths on their legs. Great tits in particular often get avian pox where they get sort of large, that looks like tumours on their faces. So all of these diseases are transmitted when the birds are using sort of dirty feeders and they're close to each other all the time. So very important to keep them clean. And the best way of doing that um, especially if you have feeders that come apart easily, and that's why metal ones are so great. Often it just needs to unscrew one or two of the bolts, and then the whole thing starts to come to pieces. I prefer just to use warm soapy water. You can use disinfectant, but um, you know, I'm never quite sure because you get residues of disinfectant left and that's not very good for the birds. Um, so I use warm soapy water and a decent soft brush just to get all the muck out. Now, don't use your toothbrush, don't use your washing up brush or your face flannel, okay? This is mucky stuff and you want to wash your hands afterwards. So keep sort of brushes that you use for the bird food, you know, sort of elsewhere in the garden. When you get to the actual sort of tube feeders, it's great if you've got a bottle brush like this and you can get right in there and sort of around all the nooks and crannies. Now, all this seems like a bit of a faff, but it is important because without it, you could actually be harming the birds, not saving them. It could make things worse. So it's really important that, you know, certainly once a month, every six weeks or something like that, 
give all the, the bird feeders a good clean. It actually only takes 10, 15 minutes. Leave them out to dry before you put the food in, otherwise it will go mouldy. Now, it's really important to keep the bird bath clean as well. They often get this red algae growing in them, which especially during the summer, but in the winter too. And you want to get rid of that, that's going to harbour disease as well. Back to me, Sue. So, the thing to do is obviously get rid of the water and basically I just use a, a stiff brush and get as much of the algae off as I possibly can before filling it up again. I have tried using disinfectant. I once used a very small amount of disinfectant, got rid of the algae brilliantly, it didn't come back for weeks. Problem is, neither did the birds, even though I rinsed it and rinsed it. Obviously, some of that disinfectant kind of got into the, the, the cement or the concrete and they could smell it or taste it. So I would advise actually against using disinfectant in bird baths. It really seems to put the birds off. But do keep it as clean as you possibly can. And don't forget, for further free advice on bird feeding or any other wildlife subject for that matter, you can phone or email our Wild Call service. Details on our website.